Hey there, Oconiacs. Let's talk about Only Murders in the Building, Season 3, Episode 9, 30. It was an amazing episode. It answered a lot of questions, but possibly may not have yet revealed the true identity of the killer. In previous seasons, we learned who the killer was at the end of Episode 9, but I have a feeling that we still have not seen the whole picture, and whoever poisoned Ben may be a different person than who pushed him. But first, let's go over the episode. The episode starts five days after the events of episode 8, where Oliver has a heart attack. Mabel dreams she's having triplets, and that was a big microphone to give birth to. She wakes up in the hospital where Oliver is being released. He's feeling rushed. As the show starts in two days, and his leading lady and love is about to get arraigned for murder. But the besties are back together and working on the case. They... Like all of us, surmise that Loretta is covering for Dickie and go talk to him, hoping to get a confession. Before they head out, Oliver receives some get well schmackery cookies from Donna and Joy's wedding dress arrives at Charles' apartment. The trio talk to Dickie, the truth about Cobra comes out, and Dickie admits his resentment for his brother. As I had guessed, Dickie also admitted to covering up Ben's tox report, but not for nefarious reasons, but as a reflex of covering for Ben and his drug use. Dickie left the after party early, as he was weirded out at the return of his brother. He got drunk, put on the Cobra outfit, and went looking for drugs and whores, specifically Ben's five whores. Dickie gets to the place where Ben disappears for hours on Thursday nights and passes out at the door. There isn't a clear picture of his face, but I feel that this clears him of any intentional wrongdoing. Our podcasters then head to that location and find Snitches Get Stitches, a fabric shop. In the back, there were not actually five whores, but five seamstresses that were a part of Ben's sewing circle. They knew Ben Glenroy's Benny and stated that he would come every week and sew with them. Benny turned to sewing to stay away from the drugs on the streets. And the seamstresses informed the trio that Ben, with the help of the ladies, actually sewed the death rattle hankies himself the night of the show's opening. They also revealed that they received a call from Ben just before he went on stage, hoping that they would be able to make it to the show. The trio head back to Charles Hayden's apartment, where they listen to Detective Williams' interviews from everyone, giving us a timeline from 30 minutes before Curtains Up to Ben collapsing on stage. Katie was the first to see Ben, after was Cliff with a box of Smackery's cookies, made special for the show. We learn that Loretta was encouraging Dickie to quit working for Ben. Dickie's resignation letter ends up in Ben's hands, causing an argument between the two. We then hear Loretta's argument with Ben on the lighthouse. It was about her coming between him and Dickie. This was indeed why he called her a snake. We then get a quick conversation between Cliff and Donna, where she tells him that she will not let him fail. Ben comes down and sees that his guests are not there, and Donna tells him to be good to himself and do whatever he needs to do in order to go on stage. And finally, Toblerone tries to get some behind the scenes footage of Ben. Emotionally distraught, Ben takes his camera and fires Toby. Later, Howard comes to show the group that he has finally put together a document. It takes Oliver two seconds to recognize it as Maxine's panned review of Death Rattle, where she says it didn't sing, causing him to turn it into a musical. Oliver and Charles sing happy birthday to Mabel, who is quietly celebrating her 30 without her old friends knowing. Oliver puts a candle into a tub of dip, unknowingly his love for dip, makes Mabel realize that Ben was in fact talking to a cookie and out of disgust for himself, he wrote fucking pig on his mirror. I just gotta say that I'm really glad that myself and many others got that right, though I will admit that I thought it would be more than one cookie. I didn't think those cookies were that big. Those are some really big cookies. Further, Oliver realizes that Donna must have seen an early copy of the review because during the sits probe, she tells Oliver to loosen up, that he looks as stiff as the wooden lighthouse. The same words written by Maxine in the review. The trio then thinks that if Donna knew the show was going to be panned, she would want to protect her son's first show as it could ruin his career. The group suggests that after shredding the review, she may have seen the rat poison in the office and poured some on the cookie, knowing it's Ben's weakness. 
Thinking they have figured out the killer, the trio needs to rush to the courthouse in 20 minutes in order to stop Loretta from pleading guilty for a crime she didn't commit. Mabel gets the idea of wearing Joy's wedding dress so they are more likely to get dibs on a cab and the driver will likely try to rush as fast as possible so the bride isn't late. The dress idea works and the trio make it to Loretta's court hearing where Oliver exclaims to her that they know why she confessed and they can prove that she's innocent. Loretta claims that she's been down this road so long and she's given up. Loretta asks who they think killed Ben, and the camera turns to see Donna, sitting in the courthouse, ready for someone else to take the fall for this crime. Now, I'm going to have to let it sit with me, but I think this may be my favorite season so far. But before we can make such bold declarations, let's do a little more decoding. I first need to throw out a hypothetical that if it was in fact Ben's cookie that was poisoned and it happened by Donna, there is a chance the cookies Oliver has now from Donna could be poisoned too. When the trio goes to Dickie hoping to get a confession, they get insight to who he was, at least from the perspective of his brother. Before this episode, it was going to be a critique of the season from me that we didn't get very much Ben. In season one, we got an episode that was very much focused on Tim Kono. In season two, we had the last day of Bunny Folger. But this season, we didn't really get that with Ben Glenroy. Yes, we had him going over some lines with Oliver in his room that led to an argument with Charles and Mabel talking to his ghost, but it wasn't enough to humanize him or really understand him. But this episode gave that to us. From Ben sewing and running lines with his older lady friends, the stress of his brother leaving him because of how he treats him and others, culminating in the scene where Ben eats the cookie. It's clear that he was emotionally troubled. Ben wasn't a good person but he was better than we thought, and he was working on doing better. He was trying to fix his wrongs. When Dickie talks about falling asleep outside of Snitches Get Stitches, he says that he's glad that there wasn't any audio. Even though he's not entirely cleared, at least by police, I think that this may be a hint to say that the trio will use hidden audio, similar to the hidden GoPro, to capture a confession from the guilty party. There was also a bit of kerfuffle with this hidden document. I saw the word Cobro and I had a comment that stated someone put a page together and it was an insurance document pertaining to the show. Neither is a review of the show and it seems as if they had a lot of documents in the shredder and we were likely never meant to see or find what was actually important. It's a little disheartening but understandable. I'm also a little confused as somehow Donna got a copy of Maxine's review for Death Rattle before the show started. From what we saw, and I believe what was inferred, Maxine did not attend a preview, and we were never told that there was a preview performance, even though it is a common occurrence. In my opinion, the trio's assumption that Donna did in fact poison Ben and then push him are both based on incomplete information. That doesn't seem to be the strongest in any way, shape, or form. Killing the star of a show because he can't act instead of recasting is overdoing it in my opinion. But if Donna did find this out on opening night, she may have felt that in the moment that information was given to her so close to starting time, she may not have had another choice. Everything Donna did could have just as easily been done by her son Cliff. He was the one that brought the cookies to Ben in the first place. It would also be a big mistake for Donna to attempt to kill Ben with the cookie and later send the man who's investigating Ben's death the same cookie that she used to try to poison him. She's just giving them clues. Furthermore, if we do want to go with Donna was in fact the person who poisoned Ben, it is just an assumption that she then pushed him. There's no evidence of her trying to push him. I think that this is where the hanky will come into play. The dip Charles had in his fridge was Norwegian red herring. And because of this, and because this led the trio thinking Donna is the killer, I think that this is our hint to say that Donna is a red herring. And though she may have tried to kill Ben, she is in fact not the actual killer. I believe that there is a second party that did the push. Maybe they got the idea from Ben almost dying the first time. 
And though there have been themes of triplets throughout the season, I can't think of any situation where three people would be involved. Cliff makes the most sense. He could have done everything Donna did. There were a lot of people's careers riding on the show being a hit, and we can't forget Toblerone. He does have a motive, especially after being fired on opening night. There are a lot of loose ends this season, and I don't know if we're going to get an answer for all of them. We don't know what's going on with Toby and Mabel's relationship, where Mabel will be living, and like many have questioned, was or is Tobert working for Cinda? She wants to get back into the true crime podcast game, and she was looking for a new partner. The death of Ben Glenroy would be a very good start. Because of these reasons and Charles openly stating that three female killers in a row would be too much, my money is on Cliff or Tobert. Maybe somehow they're both involved, and that triplet thing can come through to fruition in one way or another. But what do you think? Do you think that Donna is the killer? Or was that done to throw us off? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Dallas. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.